In case you've ever wondered, which we do get asked quite a bit on the channel and on the podcast, what my five top artists of all time might be, you're going to find out today coming right up. Hey, it's Russ from the Infectious Group Podcast and here on YouTube. And I get people that ask me all the time in uh, in regular life and uh, listeners of the podcast and a few viewers have asked, you know, hey, you talk about all this different music, but who are your five favorite artists of all time? So I'm going to tell you today, go right through them and give you a little bit of a reason why. And I'd love to hear from you too. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me your five favorite artists of all time. If you have time, uh, you know, tell me a little bit of why for each one, or just leave a comment on uh, what you think about my top five. Uh, in at number five for me is one of two artists on this list who are kind of known for not writing their own songs, which a lot of people, um, you know, there's a debate out there. Is it really an artist if they don't write their own songs? Uh, I think this is one of two artists on my list that proves that yes, uh, you can be an artist without writing your own songs. And the first one in at number five for me is Garth Brooks. Uh, Garth did a ton for me uh, in my music development. At the time that he was breaking in the very late 80s and the early 90s, I didn't want anything to do with country music at all. Uh, Garth completely turned me around on that and had me realize that there was a, a whole area of music that I wasn't giving any sort of credit to. Uh, regarding what I said earlier about not writing your own songs, uh, you listen to songs. We've done a lot of videos on Garth on the channel over the years. Uh, what she's doing now in Lonesome Dove, uh, even something as frivolous as Friends in Low Places, Garth can take a song and make it his own. He doesn't need to write it uh, in order to give you a story or a feeling. And uh, as far as live concerts go, you can't touch Garth Brooks, especially in the country arena. But the, I would argue the guy puts on as good or better shows than uh, most legendary rock touring acts. So Garth's in at number five. Coming in at number four for me uh, is Prince. Just a, I mean, what, what can be said about Prince that hasn't already been said? Uh, Prince, in many ways, did for me what Garth Brooks did, where he continually opened my mind to uh, new sounds and new genres, uh, whether it was, you know, the straight Minneapolis sound that he was known for in the 80s, uh, bringing in like uh, funk and, and new jack swing in the early 90s, uh, all the way up to pushing me toward uh, really opening my mind toward jazz with like the Rainbow Children uh, era. Uh, the guy was just always pushing boundaries. Uh, I had the privilege of seeing Prince four times in concerts uh, before he passed. And every concert was better than the last one for one reason or another. Uh, I mean, just a remarkable musician, uh, person, from what I can tell, incredible songwriter. Uh, all the way across the board, Prince fits exactly who I uh, envision as a great artist. So he's in at number four. Coming in at number three, slightly above him, is uh, Michael Jackson, who... You know, we've done quite a bit of content on Michael Jackson on the uh, Infectious Group podcast. We've done quite a bit of content on Michael Jackson here on the uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, so, again, I don't have a lot to say that hasn't already been said, except to say that uh, it doesn't matter what point in this guy's career you listen to his music, whether it's uh, his cover of Who's Loving You uh, around 10 or 11 years old, where he sounds like he has the soul of a. 50 year old man who's lost the love of his life uh, or in the middle of his career singing songs like uh, man in the mirror heal the world uh, all the way up th through gorgeous vocals on the last record that he left for us before he uh, passed away uh, and songs like butterfly or speechless uh, incredible incredible uh, songwriter vocalist performer uh, i only had the pleasure of seeing him one time in concert but it was on the bad tour and it was absolutely stunning so michael jackson in at number three for me just above michael in at number two and again this has to do with my music lineage and what this artist did for me is elvis presley uh elvis presley again so much has been said about him. Uh, for me, I think his career from 1970 to 1973-ish uh, is 
insanely underrated. Uh, it is because of uh, a live record that Elvis released in 1972 called Elvis at Madison Square Garden uh, that I, at a very young age, became exposed to tons of different types of music that I would have never even got into until way later uh, in life. And again, this goes to the Garth Brooks aspect that I put on here. Elvis never wrote a song. He never wrote uh, one single note of music. But what he could do is take a song and make it his own. He could take a song and make you feel it, even if you're not going through a heartbreak or a breakup or uh, a song like In the Ghetto. If you uh, have never experienced hardship, you can listen to Elvis sing about it and you go, wow, I know what that guy's feeling or I know what those people are feeling. Songs like Walk a Mile in My Shoes, uh, Just Pretend, uh, uh, never been to Spain. The list goes on and on and on. And that's why Elvis comes in at number two for me. Uh, my all time favorite artist is uh, easily the group that had the most influence on me and continues to have an influence on me. Uh, and this is kind of a twofer, but I count Pink Floyd as my number one pick. Uh, but a lot of it has to do with Roger Waters as a songwriter. Uh, I'm not discounting Dave or Rick or Nick or Sid for that matter. Uh, but Roger Waters songwriting really reaches down uh, and touches me. And uh, it's one of those things that I remain astounded that one person was able to write things like the whole concept of the dark side of the moon uh, songs like wish you were here. Uh, the, the entirety of the, the visceral and, uh, cutting lyrics on things like animals. And speaking of those three records, to go back and give credit to the other three guys who were in the band at the time, Dave, Nick, and Rick, Roger wouldn't have been able to do what he did or express himself in the way that he did without those guys making the music sound so diverse and so different. Dark Side of the Moon sounds far different from Wish You Were Here, which sounds far different from Animals and far different from The Wall. Uh, and we wouldn't have any of that if it wasn't for... Uh, Sid Barrett and his boundary pushing that he did before Roger even joined the band. Uh, but all the way across the board for everything they've added to my life uh, and everything that uh, performance wise, songs, song wise, uh, lessons I've learned from the inner workings of the band all the way across the board. Pink Floyd comes in at number one for me. So you guys have asked me what my number one of uh, number top five favorite artists are of all time. So now I want to hear from you. Please make sure to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of my picks uh, for top five artists of all time. And let me know what yours are. Uh, if you can pick some people can't, I know it changes a lot. Either way, let's get a discussion going below. And as we always say, thank you so much for watching.